Today your lesson's gonna be on antelope. So I already sewed this guy up. I already stapled them all up. So we're gonna focus on the face and the ears. Um, I'm just gonna show you guys a little bit of how to read reference, some good antelope reference. We're gonna do the eyes, nose, mouth, and the ears. And um, give you guys a couple little tips that I've learned through my years of doing it. So here we go. So like I said, I already got this guy sewed up and stapled up. The way that I do things is I do the face very last because it makes me feel like all the skin's pretty much in place and that's the very last step. So you're gonna go around and you're gonna trim all the excess skin that you don't need. If you leave all that skin on there when you tuck it in, uh, you have a chance of openings and gaps because it's just too thick. Um, you only leave just a small amount around the eyes, about a quarter of an inch around the mouth. No skin you, depends on what you feel like doing. I cut mine kind of short and then just epoxy the inside when it's finished, but that's all personal preference and whatever works for you. I make sure the whole time that it's nice and wet or else it's going to make it hard to work with. Here you can see what the inside of the eyes looking like, how thin I got it. I got all those little dots out of the lining. Um, here you can see how much I left on the lips. Like I said, about a quarter of an inch. Um, nose, the tannery kind of messed this one up a little bit, so I don't have a lot to work with, but uh, it's just what I have on this guy. Now for some eye reference. So I just use Google. You can find a lot of nice stuff on there. This is a nice picture. It shows you the front corner and how the back corner correlate together. Uh, it shows you a little bit of how the eyelashes lay. Um, what you can see in these pictures is that bottom eyelid's really rounded and the front corner of the eye is a bit different than a deer. Um, so I take a pen and the first thing that you want to do before you do the eye is make sure your skin is adjusted. Here I'm just pointing out antelope, animals with horns. The skin never seems to match up because a lot of the horn can kind of get shrunk as it dries. So you have to build that up later. But like I said, I get all the skin adjusted that that eye skin is sitting where it's supposed to before I tuck it in. Makes it a lot easier and less tugging and pulling. So I start at the front corner of the eye and I work in that little bit of skin very gently I try to stick it in at first. Sometimes things look worse before they get better, um, but I push the skin up in there. Here I noticed that my skin was back a little bit, so I always wanna make sure that you have slack. If you're working with skin that's tight, as it dries, it is gonna get nothing but tighter and shrink up and make a lot of problems. I have to use a pin in the front corner of these antelope eyes just because they are different than a white tail. Um, and I know it would've pulled as it dried. Here you can see how nice and round the top is, but you can see that my lower eyelash is really sticking up in the eye and you need to check your eyelashes. Uh, you're not gonna get the right look and it's not gonna be proper unless you pull them how they need to go. I do what I can with my fingers, but then if you grab a hold of them lashes and just gently pull them down and push up with your finger on the skin, you can make it still have a nice little roll but uh, getting them in the proper place is key. Here I'm just kind of pushing up. Um, you want to make sure that your eyes aren't getting flat on the bottom side. You want it to roll under like it would on a natural animal. So I kind of use my fingers to roll them eyelashes down around, make sure that I don't have a flat ledge on the inside. Make sure I can't see the back corner from the front. Give them that nice little rounded lower lid that they have. And then I go to the other side. And again, I get all the skin adjusted to where it needs to go so that that eye skin is pretty much proper and ready to be tucked in. Here's a little closer look. This guy gave me a little bit of problems. He was a little tight around this section of his head. So that front corner of the eye didn't really want to cooperate. But as you push it in, if you have it a little folded over, it's not the end of the world at first. You're gonna wanna go back and make sure that it's laying in there smooth with no folds or overlapping. You want it to be a smooth piece of skin between the eye and the clay.
here I noticed that my bottom skin was not flipped out. I always want it picked up and out so that you can easily push it down in. You want to make sure that it is going between the eye and the clay, not skin on skin. You can see I'm having a little bit of problems with this front corner. Like I said, that skin was really tight. Um, so I'm gonna take a pin, pin that in there, and then I can kind of adjust the skin around where I need it to flow. Things, like I said, sometimes look worse before they get better. So do not get discouraged. Try to do the best that you can, step by step. It will come together if you stay patient and you're gentle. Here I'm pulling the skin down slightly while I'm pushing the clay up. You don't want to pull down too hard. I've learned the right pressure and angles just from practice and time. My fingers know where to go, but you just need to make sure that you're very gentle and you're not pulling that clay down or flattening it out too much. Here I just put in a little crease. I like doing it because it pushes that clay, makes sure that it has a nice seal between the clay and that. Uh, that full like eyelid in there that there's no empty spots um, and then I can kind of push it around and, and get it shaped up how I need it to get shaped up. You want to make sure that you're not always just pulling skin back. It doesn't have to be all tight. You want it to be loose. You want to have slack. So I pull it forward, I push it up, I pull it down, I pull it back. You really have to play with it. Here you can see how the eye is taking shape. I use that pin to go up there to make sure it's nice and rounded underneath. Um, and there it goes over to the other eye to try to show a little bit of symmetry. My eyelashes on the bottom are a little, little angled up, but I can adjust that as it dries as well. I'm having a little bit of problems with uh, clay sitting into that front corner so that's what I'm just kind of trying to play around getting that to get a little bit fuller um, and not hang out over the eye too much. Here I'm adjusting a little bit of those eyelashes putting that nice little full rounded lower lid. go again a little bit of symmetry and then here I'm going to show you a reference picture and compare it with an overlap of the eye I have on this guy and you can see my lower lashes could come down a bit I'm actually a whole lot lower lid could come down just a tad so I'll adjust that later on now I take a little bit of critter clay and I put into that crease that I cut out um, between the lip and the nose because their skin kind of folds in there a little bit. Uh, so I put this in there so I have something to work with. Here's the hide paste that I use. I've just used my hands. I really, really, really like using the Pro One Performance hide paste. I've never had a problem with drumming or any issues with that. So I highly recommend you try some. Um, I put a link in the bio in case you need to need to check it out and see what you'd like to get. They also have amazing tanning supplies and an awesome deodorizer, which I love. <laughs> but you make sure that you get it nice and even. You don't want any huge clumps. I put a little bit up in the nose. Uh, you make sure you have it all around the lip line so that you don't have any issues with the lip skin sliding and moving out of place. Here you can see the inside of the nose skin. You can see that I got that pretty thin. There's a couple spots I could have got a little bit more. Your clay work doesn't have to be perfect since you're gonna be smushing it up anyways, but here you can see how evenly coated it is. A couple thick spots, but that isn't gonna hurt. So I pull down the skin over the nose. You wanna make sure you don't get it over the hair or anything. You get the general lineup of the skin, the nose, make sure it's pretty symmetrical. First, I use my thumbs and I press in there to try to get that bottom kind of lined up. But then I'm going to use a lip tucker tool uh, to tuck that nose in. It helps it curve around real nice. I start at the upper corner and push that down in. 
You want to make sure that you look at some reference for this as well. That way you can see where hairline should meet up. These guys aren't as much as white tails as far as that white tails have that inner white hair on the inside of their nose and you need to have that lined up just perfectly. Uh, these guys you can't really tell because everything's so dark. But sometimes it's tough to not have wrinkles up in the corners, so you want to make sure that's nice and smooth. And that hide paste in there will help that stick really nice. I take this mesh and that's what I use to stick in the nose to keep the skin in place. I like it more than plastic or foam because it allows airflow. I fold it up a couple times and I smoosh it up in there. That way a little bit of air can still get in but it still holds it in place. So here I start kind of at the top and push it in and I push it in kind of gently but also firm but you want it to still stick to the outside enough that it's going to keep that skin compressed against the form all around. You check to make sure there's any wrinkles. You want to make sure you smooth them out before it starts drying. Do the same thing to the other side. Now I can see in this video that my part that goes from the nose down to the lip is a little bit crooked. Um, once I pushed it in, it, it didn't really matter, didn't make a difference, but it's still, you can see it here in the zoomed up video and it's bothering me. <laughs> but you get all of this pushed into the nose to make sure it's gonna hold that skin really well and in place. Then we go to pushing in that skin. It kind of rolls in on itself and uh, comes together. I put a little bit of clay up into the nose pad because it has that little bit of shape in there where it has a little crease down the middle. It's gonna take a little bit of maneuvering because um, the skin's kind of wanting to wrinkle up on me on this guy as well. So it just takes a little bit of playing. It's the same thing as patience. After some patience and moving around, it got pretty nice. So here you can see the inside of the lips. You can see I hide pasted everything when I did the nose and uh, it's ready to be tucked in there. Here I'm showing you where the corner is. You wanna look at where the hair pattern changes and you wanna tuck that in first, pushing it back towards the cheek. You don't wanna just put it flat in. I use a stout rougher to maneuver the skin where I need it to go because um, it works really well to just gently pull on it. And I start from the back corner, move up to the front, do the same thing on the other side. You want to make sure that back corner you don't get any wrinkles. It can be kind of tough sometimes, but you just got to play around with that skin and get it to sit where you need it to go. Here you can see that where how that crease goes in that goes from the lip to the nose. Um, then I'm ready to tuck the bottom lip. I sit it down in place and you can see in that back corner where it already starts to kind of flap over and I don't want that because I don't want any kind of wrinkle. But I put the front lip in even where it's supposed to go, move back to the back, get that corner tucked in. And as I'm pushing this bottom lip in, I'm pushing it down but I'm also kind of pushing it forward a hair because if you keep pulling it back, it's gonna pull that bottom lip down in the front and it's gonna stretch it and it's gonna open up as it dries and it's, it's gonna really expose that bottom lip, which you do not want because you aren't gonna see much of a lip on these guys. You can see I'm pushing down to make sure I've got plenty of slack in the skin so that it is not tight and does not pull. I'm just messing around with the hair patterns a little bit, getting stuff to sit how it should. These guys are kind of tough to feel the wrinkles underneath all of that thick, coarse hair, but you gotta really dig down in there and make sure that there's nothing, no wrinkles underneath all of that fur. So now I'm checking to see how I wanna do the ears. I like to do a little bit of a back ear on these guys because they have such a pretty curve to their ear, um, but it's kind of an in the middle of back and forward. 
So I'm gonna move him here so that you can see what I'm doing. But I'm gonna get it adjusted because I'm pulling slack up because you need some slack as in everything to work with what you're doing. You don't want it all tight. It's gonna make your job a lot harder. And some other things caught my eye which I needed to go back and adjust and push and move. So I start with some potter's clay, take off a little piece and I go in there to where the bondo ends and the skin starts. And you can see that's the movement I'm doing with my finger inside of that ear is I'm curving and pulling it up in between the skin and the bondo. If you don't have a good ring around there where it blends into that bondoed ear, you're gonna have a gap and it's gonna be uneven in a line and you're gonna see it. So I take this and I push a, a nice little, little piece up in there and uh, start forming the muscle. When I'm forming the muscle, I'm pushing it against the skin. I'm not just balling up clay in there. I'm going up, pushing it up in the skin, and trying to get my shape right. I pretty much leave it hollow inside the ear, as long as I have a nice firm outer shell of clay, because that allows me to move it, add a little bit if I need to, but also get my finger in there and push it back up against the skin if there's little areas, like you can see I'm doing right there to build that muscle up. I'm pushing that up in against the skin so that I get that shape correct. If you pack that clay in there, you're going to make problems for yourself. You're not going to be able to go back and adjust it. It's going to make it last. It's going to make it 10 times harder to dry. It's going to take a long time. So there I have the basics down as far as how much clay I need. I do the same thing on the other side. Get my finger up in there and kind of curve and pull that clay up in between the the skin and the uh, the bondo and like I said you want to put your finger in there and you're gonna to want to go the whole way around that and when you think you have it already you put your hand in there and you feel and if there are any little spots that are empty fill them up but uh you can go in there and uh, move it around however you need as long as you leave yourself enough space if you, I say it again, if you pack that clay in there, you're going to have problems. You can see where that little bit of that, uh, trying to put that muscle in, but you can see where it's not flowing. It's got a crease in there, which I'm going to zoom in here in a moment um, to show you what I'm seeing right there. So that means there's not enough clay packed up against the skin in that spot because it's folding in on itself which you do not want because their muscle isn't going to completely fold on itself like that. They'll have little creases, but it's not going to collapse. So I would get clay and I push it up in there, push it up against the skin and uh, let it flow off that skull plate into that muscle of that ear really nicely. So here's some reference. I looked at this to maybe do an ear position similar. Um, uh, let's see, when you're gonna put your deer to do the ears as far as position, I sit it up high like it'd be hanging on the wall so that I can see what it looks like from that point of view. And this is why you don't wanna pack your ears as well because this allows me to get in there and move that whole ear. If they were packed in there, they would not move whatsoever. So I'm putting them in a general position. I duck down to try to see if they're looking how I want them to. Um, going around, making sure they're pretty symmetrical uh, because symmetry is beautiful to the eye. Even if it doesn't occur in nature all the time, you want people to look at it and let it catch their eye as something beautiful. And that's gonna be symmetry. So I try to make sure there's the same amount sticking out on each side, make sure it's anatomically correct. And uh, this, is, this is the finished product so far on this guy. So I hope you guys enjoyed following along and subscribe, like, follow, whatever you need to do to stay tuned for more episodes.